Silver! Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver! The Lone Ranger. In the early days of the Western United States, there was no adequate system of courts, and many times when one of the frontier towns was aroused by a crime, they took the law in their own hands. The masked rider of the plains fought these lynch mobs with the same great courage that he fought the outlaws who roamed the new territory. He realized that violence was the enemy of justice, and it was he more than any other man who brought peace and security to the frontier, the final victory in the winning of the West. Return with us now, those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's an Indian war party near Yellow Creek. We've got to hurry. Hello, Silver. Away. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were following a trail west of the town of Springdale when they drew their great horses to a halt beside the ashes of a campfire. Oh, oh, so oh, scout. oh boy. Oh. Oh. Hey, we're heading for Springdale, Tonto. There's no doubt of it now. Uh, that's not right. How old would you say these ashes are? Uh, maybe eight, ten hours. I'd say about the same. That means even the man on foot will reach town long before we can catch up to him if he continues on after dark. You know, Sabe, this is one of the strangest trails we've ever followed. It heaps strange. Look at the prints made by the man on foot when he left this camp. They were made before the fire died out. That indicates he built the fire, then left without bothering to put it out. The last campfire we came to was the same way. The others, however, had been carefully covered over with earth. Maybe him get tired. Tired and careless. Look at the way he was walking when he left this camp. You can see he was near the end of his strength. Uh, That's natural, however. He walked a long way. The strange thing is the trail left by the man on horseback. He must have been nearly an hour, perhaps a little less, behind the first man. And he's kept that same distance almost the whole way. Although on horseback, he should have caught up to the man on foot a long time ago. Him not want catch up. He doesn't. That's plain. And I'd like to know why. Maybe we find out. There's no doubt that the man on foot was one of the party of men ambushed near Yellow Creek. Six dead, and he was the only survivor. Uh -huh. The fellow on horseback wasn't with that party, however. We saw where he rode up to the place where the ambush occurred, then took out on the trail of the man walking. One place, it looked as though they must have been quite close together, and the horseman dropped back again. Not what trail say. I'm sorry we didn't find this trail in time to catch those fellows. We find them in town, maybe. We'll try. This has got me puzzled, and I won't be satisfied until we've learned the reason for all this. Come, Tonto. We'll be on our way. Uh, hey, old boy. We have much further to go now. Ready, Kimosabe? Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. That evening, a man approached a small house just outside Springdale. 
His head drooped, his dragging footsteps were evidence that he had covered many weary miles. But as he walked up the steps and crossed the porch, he threw back his shoulders and tried to appear stronger than he really was. Who? Oh, Dave. Dave, honey. In heaven's name, what's happened? Edna. Your boots, Dave. Your, your clothes. I... No, don't talk. Sit down first. Then you can tell me about it. I'm all right. Here. Take this chair. Oh, gosh, honey. It sure seems good to sit down. Those boots almost worn through. Dave, tell me what's happened. Why did you come back? Where are Ralph and Greg and the others? Did you leave them? I left them. Dave, something terrible has happened. I know it has. The way you look... Honey, I hope to the Lord I'd never have to see the things I've seen again. Are you... Oh, oh, Pa, I'm so glad to see you. Mama said you wouldn't be home for a whole week yet. Hello, Ginny. There, give your Pa a big hug and get right back to bed. It's past your bedtime. But, Pa... Virginia, you heard what your father said. Your Ma and me got some things to talk about, honey. See? Uh-huh. Now, give me that hug and go get your beauty sleep. All right, Pa. <laughs> oh, there. Now, run along. Good night. And uh, close your bedroom door, Virginia. All right, Mama. Now, tell me, Dave. It was Indians. Oh, no. Come at us over by Yellow Creek. Honey, we never had a chance. Them sneaking devils was on us before we knew there was Indians within a hundred miles. Thank the Lord you're alive, Dave. The others? Dead. Every one of them. Oh, Killed within ten minutes of the first sight we had of them redskins. Killed without hardly a chance to fight back. But you... I don't know how I come out of it alive, honey. The others was all hit, so I tried to play possum, figuring maybe I could fool them murdering heathens. I don't reckon they'd have been fooled much when they started to lift in scalps. But just when I was expecting them to close in, something or other must have scared them off, and, well, anyway, they, they lit out in a hurry. You don't know what frightened them? I, I've got a hunch it was nothing at all. It was likely just nervous-like. The redskins around these parts are beginning to learn it. White folks strike back mighty fast when they have to. They ain't taking the chances they used to. You must have walked all the way back. They done for our horses, too. Your poor darling. Well, it was a chore, honey. And I savvy now what folks that have been lost on a trail mean when they say they get to imagining all kinds of crazy things. Yes. Well, once, not so far away from where them engines got us, either, I could have swore I heard a horse close by. And I got the... Blame this feeling somebody was watching me from cover. Might have been an Indian. Well, why didn't he finish me off? Could have done it easy enough. Couldn't have been a white man. Shucks, of course it couldn't. A white man would have given me a lift. You know, like I said, I was just imagining things is all. You know, Dave, right from the first I was against this trip. But, honey, Springdale ain't no place to keep our safe. Huh? I know. And all we aimed to do was get to the bank in Millfield. It seemed safe enough. Seven of us traveling together and no word of Indians making trouble for the last month. The money. I've got it right here. Gold and folding money both. I took what the others had and brought it all back. And I near throwed it away a couple of times, honey. Got that heavy while I was walking. But poor Mary. Greg's savings is all she'll have to live on now. And Ralph's folks and Lem's sister. I had to bring it back to him somehow. Dave, I'm proud of you. Oh, it wasn't nothing, honey. Well, I've got to be getting on. Can't be sitting here while there's work to be done. Oh, Dave, what are you going to do? Your horse is saddled. I've seen it outside. I had to ride into town for food, but... But, Dave, you can't go out. You're, you're exhausted. What is there you have to do that can't wait till morning? Now, don't make a fuss, honey. You know I got to tell the sheriff about this. I can do that. But you can't do the rest of it, honey. It's up to me to return this cash and... To tell the women folks what's happened to their men. No, Dave. No, you've got to stay here. It's my duty to tell them, honey. Ain't nobody else can do that. And they ain't going to thank me for thinking of myself first. Staying home and I ought to be breaking the news to them. Please, Dave. Ain't no use arguing. You're so tired. But, honey, I'm alive and some of them ain't. But the money, at least you leave that here. Dave, I'd go crazy thinking of you away from me with all that money on you. You know what this town is like. What if someone tried to hold you up? How could you defend yourself as tired as you are? Well, I... No one will expect you to return the money tonight. Just tell them it's safe here and you'll take it to them tomorrow or they can call for it. Well, I reckon that's good sense of that, honey. Yeah, I'll put it in this drawer. Now, then, that satisfy you, honey? You won't be gone long? Shucks, no. Just do what has to be done and get back. Oh, oh, Dave. <laughs> now, you ain't going to start carrying on now, are you? Well, I'm just beginning to realize what you've gone through. If, if I'd lost you. <laughs> but you didn't, and you ain't likely to. Now, then... You get to bed yourself, and don't you do no worry. Well, I'll, I'll try not to. That's a good girl. Bye. Bye, darling. Oh, I'm an awful fool. 
promised the money in the house. I wish it wasn't here. It doesn't seem safe, but... <laughs> Maybe I'm imagining things like Dave said he did. I... Oh! Hello. Oh, what's the matter? Who's that? Virginia, my daughter. Mama, what is it? Tell her to stay where she is. Tell her it's just her pa come back. But I... If you don't, it's going to be just too bad for her, you savvy. It's, it's all right, honey. It's... It's just your father. He he forgot something. Can I come on and say good night to Paul again? Stay where you are, do you hear? Stay where you are. <laughs> well, that's better. What do you want? That cash. You... And I'm going to have it. Make a noise, lady, and it's your kid that'll pay for it. Scarcely an hour later that Milt Crandall galloped his horse up to the sheriff's office, dismounted and ran up the steps. Martin! Oh, it's you, Milt. Sheriff! Uh, you look like you've seen a ghost. What's wrong? I, I, uh, wait till I catch my breath. Well? It's Mrs. Fulton, Dave Fulton's wife. What about her? Uh, she's dead. Dead? Uh -huh. You're loco. I wish to heaven I was. Well, blast the talk. How do you know she's dead? And if she is, who killed her? Where is she now? And what is Hold it? on. Hold on. Give me a chance to talk, will you? Well, hurry up, doggone it. You know we're neighbors to the Fultons. Yeah? Well, just about ten minutes back, the young one come running to our place screaming bloody murder. We couldn't get much out of her at first, but when we went to her house, we found her plenty. Go on. There was Mrs. Fulton. Edna killed. Shot? Choked to death. Good Lord. A and guess who done it? You found out? Who was the sneaking sidewinder? Dave. No. Towards I tell you. And Sheriff, there's the best evidence for it you ever want to have, even if you don't think it's likely. What evidence? It's Ginny, Dave's own kid that says she done it. Uh, she says he was the only one in the house tonight. He was home once and come back again. And when the girl called out to her ma, Mrs. Fulton said it was Dave was there. Milk, you come with me. We got to find Dave, and I'm giving you an order. Uh, what's that? You don't tell nobody about this till I say you can. We got to keep this hushed up. Because the minute the news gets out, there'll be a lynching party in town as sure as you're born. Now, come on. Still later that same night, the Lone Ranger raced into the camp he and Tonto had made near Springdale. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Silver. Oh, I see you back already, Tonto. Ah, uh, and me got news. And so have I. Tonto, the man who came into town on foot was a fellow by the name of Dave Fulton. Right now, he's being held in jail on the charge of murdering his wife. Oh, him do that? Tonto, I doubt it. I could look at Dave when the sheriff captured him. He didn't look like a killer to me. Uh. There are some peculiar angles to this case. Dave was found about five miles from town. Seemed that he fell from the saddle of the horse he was riding and was stunned. Dave, however, claims he was hit outside his home and doesn't know how he reached the spot where the sheriff found him. Maybe him tell truth. He told the sheriff about the massacre. So now he'd walked all the way to town. They told us something else. He'd been carrying more than $1,000 on him. Mm, that plenty cash. He said he left the money in the house for safekeeping and had gone to inform relatives of the murdered man. Money, however, is missing. What sheriff think? The sheriff maintains that Dave stole the money himself and has hidden it somewhere. Dave was weak after his long trip afoot, and the sheriff thinks that that explains Dave's falling from the saddle after hiding the stolen money. Oh. The worst part of it is his own daughter will have to testify against him. It's her word that shows he was in the house. Not bad. Yet I'm wondering if her testimony couldn't be turned into Dave's favor. What you mean? I'll explain later. You said you had news? Huh. Me follow a fella ride horse. Could you find him? Him heap smart. Him hide trail in town. Maybe Tonto find trail when sun come up. It would be almost impossible to find anyone's trail in town where horses are traveling back and forth all the time. Mm, that's right. But I've got an idea. We'll act on it first thing in the morning when there's light. In the meantime, the sheriff's keeping the murder, even Dave's return to town, a secret. He fears a lynching. And him right. He is. Moreover, that fact will give us the time we need, and we need every minute we can get. Tato, I'm certain of this. If we fail, an innocent man will hang. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger was certain that Dave Fulton was not guilty of murder. And at daybreak, he and Tonto rode to the spot where Dave had been arrested by the sheriff. Then they picked up the trail, and Tonto's keen eyes followed it to the end. Later, when the sheriff arrived at his office, he found himself looking into a gun held by a masked man. An Indian and a short, stocky fellow with a brutal face stood behind the stranger. Don't slap on the sheriff. I'm not taking chances. Masked? What in blazes? We've been waiting for you. Open up your office and get inside before anyone comes along. Why, you You'll could... Get in there. I'll fix you fellas for this. Unlock that door. I'll see that Jarvie doesn't make a break for us. Um, you watch him. You blasted polecats. Who's this fellow? In with you. He's the man who killed Mrs. Fulton. He's the man who... Hey, how'd you know about that? I know more about it than you do. Sheriff, don't you believe a word this masked fellow says. He's trying to frame me, that's all. Him and Dave are in this together. Quiet, Garvey. Don't talk unless I tell you you can. Now, what's this all about? Sheriff, Dave told you someone knocked him out when he left the house. Well, this is the man who did it. Ah. This man followed Dave into town. He knew Dave was carrying a large amount of money. When he saw the opportunity to get it, he acted. Stranger, your story don't hold water. If this hombre followed Dave for the cash, he'd have helped himself to it a long time before they got to Springdale. If you're aiming to get Dave free on a trumped-up story, you'll have to think up a better one than that. Look at this man's holsters. Huh? Don't you pay no attention to him, Sheriff. I told you to keep quiet. Well, Sheriff, what do you see? Nothing. That's just it. His holsters are empty. Dave carried a gun with him when he came to town. That's why Garvey didn't attack him. He didn't dare. Sheriff, the masked fella took my guns away from me. Wouldn't surprise me, none. I don't care whether you believe me or not on that point. There are still other points that show Dave was innocent. Hmm. When his own girl testified against him? You think that proves his guilt. I think it proves he's innocent. You're talking crazy. Why would Dave have killed his wife? That's easy. He never figured she'd insist on his giving back the cash he wanted to keep for himself. He most likely told her he planned on stealing it, and they got into an argument, and he seen the only thing he could do was to get her out of the way. And you believe he murdered his wife so that she couldn't tell his plans? I do. And why didn't he do something to prevent his daughter from talking? The girl says her mother called out that her father had come back. If Dave was there, he knew this. The death of his wife wouldn't have been enough. His daughter would have to die, too. Say, that's a point I never thought of. Suppose, however, that a stranger had entered the home and forced Mrs. Fulton to tell Virginia it was her father. And the stranger would have everything to gain by letting the daughter live to repeat what she thought to be the truth. Hmm, well, uh, think what you want. You ain't got a bit of evidence against me, and you never will have. Perhaps I There's have. one thing. Well? If this fellow's guilty, where's the cash? That's something we don't know. We picked up his trail from the spot where he left Dave outside town. He must have hidden the cash earlier. Wherever he hid it, he's covered his trail well. Then I don't see that you got any real evidence against him at all. Did you find any stolen money on Dave? No, and but... the uh, cases are the same. Stranger, I'll be frank with you. You got me where I don't know what to think. And especially I don't see where you and the engine fit into all this. Your friend uh, Dave's... We might be. That mask. I wear for reasons of my own. I am not an outlaw. I don't know what to do. Then I'll tell you. Huh? First, you lock this man up. Hey, you can't do that. Now, look here, Sheriff. Another this word fellow... out of you and you'll regret it. As I said, Sheriff, this man is going to be jailed. Well, I sure hate to let loose of him as long as there's any question about who's guilty. Lock him up now. My deputies will be showing up pretty soon. That's what I expected. The cells are back there? Yeah. Come along, Garvey. Blast you. Go on. Through this door here. Stay in there, Tonto. Give us warning if anyone comes in. Well, he do that. We'll be right back. Sheriff. Sheriff, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Sheriff, you've got to believe. Say, who are these fellows? Hello, Dave. I don't know you, do I? No, but I followed your trail for quite a distance. You followed my trail? We'll talk about that some other time. Sheriff, get this man behind bars. Sure, he's going in this cell over here. Come on there, mister. Get in here. This is nothing but a frame-up. All right, stranger, there he is. He won't be getting out for a while. We'll go back in your office. Hmm. Wait, Sheriff, I want to talk to you. Wait. You can do your talking later. Close the door, Sheriff. Yeah. Anyone coming yet, Tonto? He's not seeing anyone. Good. Now then, stranger, what else you got to say? So far, Sheriff, you've kept the news of Mrs. Fulton's death a secret. If I didn't, there'd sure be trouble. I want you to see that the news is circulated around town. You what? I mean exactly that. You savvy what you're saying? You're just the same as saying you want a lynching bee. Right. I'll be blessed if I can figure you out. First you act like you're on Dave's side, then you act like you want to see him killed. Tell the people in town you have reason to believe Dave and Garvey were in on the killing together. Stranger, you're blind loco to be a mob ready for action so blame fast you won't know what struck. I'm planning on that. Look here, one of them two fellas is guilty, and I'm willing to admit that maybe it ain't Dave. 
What's more, I wouldn't blame nobody that figured the killer needed stringing up. But I'll be blessed if I want to see an innocent fella killed just to make sure the guilty one gets his. Do you wish to know which one of those two men is really guilty? There ain't nothing I'm wishing for more. Then do as I say and you'll find out. The Lone Ranger explained what he had in mind and the sheriff agreed to put his plan into execution. He waited until nightfall before circulating the news of Edna Fulton's murder. It spread through town like wildfire. The brutality of the crime enraged everyone. And not a half hour after the first report, a mob had gathered outside the cafe. Urged on by their leaders, the men advanced on the jail, calling for the sheriff's two prisoners. Sheriff and his two deputies placed themselves before the door leading to the sheriff's office. But the mob swept them aside. Then, swinging a heavy ram, the angry men began the work of battering in the door. Come on! All together now! Come on! 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 The sheriff had placed Garvey and Dave in the same cell. Together they heard the cries of the mob outside. They heard the splintering crash of the ram as it was swung by sturdy arms. Then they heard another sound, the voice of Tonto. You come here. Huh? The engine. Me not want you, Father Shane. Tonto, get you out. You're going to rescue us, Redskin? Uh, you, look. A rope tied to the bar scene uh, in the window. Uh, scout him. Plenty strong. Him pull bar out. You climb through the window. If that horse can pull out these bars, Redskin, he'll be saving my life. Him pull. Get him up, scout. Get him up. Get him up, scout. They're coming. More, Redskin. More. Pull, scout. Get him up, fellas. Get him up. That's all more, Scott. Hit that horse going, Redskin. Get him up, Scott. Pull. 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 There. There, Pa. Oh, you climb out window. Out of my way. Me, I'm give me getting out of here. Thanks, Redskin. Here, me help you. There. there. Now what do we do? How are we going to get clear of town before that mob finds us? Do not worry. I you ain't going to worry. Up with your hands. The skunk grabs your gun, Redskin. Uh, him bad fella. You heard me. Up with your hands and keep them up. Make a move and I'll let you have it. What you do? You rotten skunk. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm saving my skin. You fellas can worry about yourselves. Get it up. The poor got... cat's taking your horse. That's all right. We can't let him get away with this. <laughs> but you're going to. And with a horse like this to ride, I'd just like to see the fella can catch me. Get up, you get horse up. thief. <laughs> him do what on the wall. What? You wanted that skunk to take your horse? Uh, him falling fat. Him, fella. Killing your wife. What's that you said? Him, killer. Then that's why neither him or the sheriff would tell me what he was doing in jail. They knew I'd kill him if I got the chance. Now you come. Follow Tonto. That fellow not get way. The, the mob. This way you come. While the lynch mob broke into the jail only to find that their intended victims had escaped, Tonto led Dave to a secluded spot where they found the masked man and the sheriff waiting. Two extra horses were standing nearby. Tonto mounted one and Dave the other. Then the masked man shouted a command and the group raced away. Come on, after him! Come on, Silver! Get up, get up, get up. With the great horse Silver in the lead, they followed Garvey's trail at lightning speed. Before long, the masked man called to his companion. I got a glimpse of him, Sheriff. You did? Where is he at? Heading for those woods. You can just make him out. I see him. But what if he sees us? That won't matter. He likely mistake us for members of the crowd that broke into the jail and somehow got on his trail. Riding stout, he'll be sure he can get away. Come on, this way. We'll approach the woods from the side. Harry Silver, old fellow. Come on, get up, boy. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Garvey did not realize that he was being followed. When he reached the woods, he drew Scout to a halt and... Oh, hold it, Blasher. Oh, uh, uh, the cash. I've got to clear out of this part of the country. But I'll get the cash first. I hid at the foot of this tree. On, What's that? Come on, boys, come on. Uh, horsemen, but they won't get me. Uh, that cash, here it is. Uh, stuff it in my pockets. Got to hurry. Got to be traveling. There. Now stand still, you honorary critter. We're going to make tracks. Hold on there. <laughs> Think they can catch me, do they? <laughs> Get up there! Get up there! Here you go! Oh, go! Oh, go! You loco critter, what's hailing you? Get up there! Get up! I'll show you! Get up there! Get up there! Oh, oh, oh! You can't get away, Kirby! 
Bless you. What are you done to this horse to keep it from running? Well, you ain't got me yet. Stay back or take that. Stay back. Put up that gun. You, oh, my hand. You hit, Scarlet. I'm going to hit you. No. Uh, no. Let me alone. Wait, please. You rotten killer. I'll fix you. No, Dave, no. Don't let him kill me. Don't. No, stop, Dave. You've got to let the law handle him. Dave, don't you try to take the law into your own hand. Harvey, you're under arrest, and this time it ain't for suspicion. If the mass fellow was right, we've got the proof on you. No, no, let me alone. I never done nothing. Here's I the just... stolen money in his pocket, Sheriff. It's all gone if he ain't. I knew of a lynch mob threw a real scare into him. He'd attempt to leave the country altogether. He'd never leave, however, without taking the stolen cash with him. So he led us right to the evidence. And only the thief and killer could know where the money had been hidden. Sheriff, right, just right, let right. me get my hands on him once. Nope, I'm deputizing you. You're going to help me take this pole cat to the next county where that mob can't get their hands on him. And a deputy has to obey the law. He's got to hang. Don't you worry none about that. It's only a doggone shame he can't be hung a dozen times over. You're completely convinced of Dave's innocence, Sheriff? Stranger, there ain't no doubt of it. Him and Garvey was both give the same chance to show what they was when Tonto broke them from jail like you planned. But it was Garvey acted like a crook, and it was Garvey knowed where the cash was hid. There ain't nothing more to be said. Yeah. Then our work here is done. Come, Tonto. Get him up. Go. Hello, Silver. How are you? have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.